One of the reasons I love teaching is that I get to learn the most out of all the students. I've always thought of teaching as the ultimate scholarship opportunity because you get paid, you get paid more than if you were a student on their scholarship, and you get to learn and engage with other students and other faculty members, and it's just awesome. Um, that said, it's amazing how many times I can teach a topic and actually not uh, learn everything. I've taught graphics classes several times. And last semester when I was teaching graphics at the University of Utah, we had something come up and I was like, oh, that's weird. I don't, I've never seen that before. And I should have seen it before, but it just so happened that we made a scene and I noticed the problem. And no, no, without further ado, this, this, this uh, video is going in the graphics playlist. Let me show you what happened. Well, let me show you what we were seeing. And then uh, we can figure out what's going on there. I'm going to put our light above our Taurus. And isn't it nice I'm making a graphics video? I haven't done this for like a year. And it's good to get that going on. I'm going to put our camera right there. Right there. And I want you to pause the video because that's what I have you do is pause the videos. And in the comments, tell me, what is wrong with this scene? There's something wrong with this scene. Pause the video. Tell me. Comments. Go. All right, let me let me just point out here. Hopefully you got it. I don't know. Here, here's the light, right? And if our eye or our camera is where it is right now, I would expect some light to glean off the top of this and hit us right in the eye. Okay, that arrow is coming out at our eye. All right, and so, yeah, yeah, we do. We have some nice specular red highlight right there. I totally expect that. But then what is going on here? This is like the opposite side of the torus. The light's on the opposite. How are we reflecting light from the opposite side of the torus? That doesn't make sense. Well, that doesn't make sense. Let me see if I can stress this even more. Um, I'm going to get rid of the torus. We're not going to draw the torus. And we'll just use the plane. And let's bring the light down low. Everything looks kind of good. I'm going to bring the camera down low. And then, whoa, what's going on back here at the corner of the plane? All right, we have our nice specular highlight there. Our specular's red. Remember, we set it to red. And then got this kind of reddish going on in the background. So that was my first suspicion was, oh, it's, it's red in the background. It must have something to do with specular light because it's red. All right, well, let's see if we can poke around a little bit more. I'm going to come here and I'm going to, instead of taking our specular power up so high, remember the higher the value that we have right here, the tighter that specularity is, the shinier, the more sparkly. Uh, let, let's not be so extreme. I'm going to set this to four. Control to five. Build down. Oh! And look at this. Let's bring the light down again. Okay, nice big specular highlight there. Not as tight. And then, oh, look at all this redness going on here. So I know that tweaking this part of the code there directly affects what intarnation is going on out here. All right, let's, uh, let's change this up. I'm going to we'll go two. Why not? Go two. Yeah, we got the red again. And then also another thing that kind of keyed it off to me was, hey, you're moving the camera around, and as I move the camera around, that redness changes. So this all smells like a specular problem. And now before you, I tell you what the problem is. Can you pause the video and tell me what the problem is? Can you detect it? Can you see it? What's going on here? Pause the video. Go. Let me take a snippy. Let me take a snippy of this scene as we have it right now. And I'm going to fly over to this part of the scene right there. I'm going to fly here. And our specularity is going to change because the eye position is going to change. But I, I think that will help us kind of drill home what's going on here. So let's fly around. Come over here. and Oh, it's white. It's white or gray or whatever. Um, but it doesn't matter. I can still explain what's going on here because we can see it over here. Uh, we have a surface normal, do we not? There's our surface normal. I'm going to make it nice and long, even though it's normalized. And then we have a light vector, like so. That's a horrible light vector. Let me try again. We have, oh, I'll cheat, I'll cheat. Click, click, there we go. That's definitely a light vector, but I'll normalize it. And uh, like so. And then we have an eye vector, and our camera was hanging out way behind the light, so our eye was kind of way over here. Uh, let's do the eye vector in white. Eye vector. Our eye was way behind there. So we'll say eye vector was like that. 
And then, oh, look, look, there's not much of an angle between those two. That should key off to maybe what the problem is. But remember this light vector, we reflected it, didn't we? We reflect it. And then we're really taking the dot product between this I vector and our reflected light vector. Well, the dot product's going to be negative. Uh, in fact, I think I got my graphing count. Yeah, there we go. Now the graphing calculator there, let me get that stuff off. And so you see here we have cosine of x. I graphed cosine of x. And then I'm going to do cosine of x raised to, I think we did like the fourth power or something. You see how cosine of x actually tightens up. We saw this in previous videos. Cosine of x tightens up. The higher the power, here we'll do 100. Ooh, that was really tight. Did you see that? We'll do 100. Ooh, that's super tight. All right, so this is our range of specularity between here and here. And we talked about this all in previous videos, but you know, it's been a year or so since I've done one of these graphics videos. And we're going to keep doing them along with all the other playlists I'm working on. But uh, we, we, this should be a review, okay? We're, this is our range of specularity. And the higher the exponent, the tighter the specularity goes. Well, what if I come up here and say, well, 1, uh, oh, 1. All right, notice what happens. Okay, we have our nice tight specularity, but then, ooh, this thing went down. Okay, it went negative. All right, so out here where our two vectors split far, we get very negative range. And so part of me is thinking, you know, let's go back to our scene and get these back up. Uh, we have very negative range. Negative range means I should actually be subtracting light. From our end result. Remember previous videos, we talked about how if our normals aren't set up right, we do a dot product, dot product comes out negative and actually subtracts light. And do you remember what we did to fix that? <laughs> We're going to do the same thing in this video if you don't remember what we did to fix that. But, but this is to, to subtract light. Now, here's the weird thing I didn't know that GLSL had this behavior. Totally new to me. I just figured this out uh, as I was prepping for this video. If anything, I'd expect this dot product to subtract light from our scene, but it doesn't. In fact, it added a bunch of red light, and so I was like, well, okay. Okay, well, maybe, ooh, I know, I know. Uh, we raise to a, an even power, and an even power means that, hey, this is actually going to go positive, right? If I, if I take this and say, well, let's raise it to an even power, you see how this hump is in the positive quadrant now? It's positive value, but if we do a negative, or if we do an odd power, then we get negative, which makes sense. A negative times a negative is a positive, but a negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. And so, yeah, Jamie, of course, if I raise to an even power, then that would actually add light, because that, that takes our negatives, cancels out all the negatives, and we get a positive. So just to verify that, let's do an odd power. I'll raise it to three, and we should see, or at least what I expect to see, was all this red would go away, and it would become completely black because we're subtracting light. So I'm going to run that, and oh, wait, wait, the, red, the, red, uh, the red's still there. This is, uh, let's bring the light down. Whoa, lots of red. Lots of red. I raised to an odd power. That's just subtract light. Oh, that doesn't make sense. And so I got even more suspicious. I was like, okay, all right, let's close this. And instead of saying pow to the three ourselves, let's come here and say, well, S gets S times S times S. I'll explicitly raise S to an odd power. Control F5, run that. And, oh, look, we get this, this, I don't know what color this blue, green, blue, cyan, is it? I can't remember. But that's, oh, weird. So I've subtracted yellow and red, which gives us this greenish color. I was like, oh. Duh, of course, it's not going to go black, but yes, we did remove the red. So why does raising to an odd power give us a positive value, whereas explicitly doing the power ourselves gives us a negative value? I mean, look here, S times S times S, that's exact same as S to the third, but we got positive result here, and we got a negative result there, and that subtracted all of our red out, and then we were left with blue and green. Well, I did some research. And I looked up POW in the GLSL standard. And, oh, here's a little caveat. You wouldn't even notice it unless I was making a video on it. POW returns the value of X raised to the power of Y. Cha-ching! I'd expect that. Good job. The result is undefined if X is less than zero. <laughs> Which means, hey, GLSL is going to do whatever it wants to do when I raise a negative value to a power. Go figure. Totally didn't expect that, but I suspect that's a hardware implementation thing. Maybe 
raising values or dealing with signed uh, negative values, floating point values is, is an expensive thing. Maybe they can optimize that out of the hardware. I'm totally speculating here. But anyway, totally weird experience. I'll tell you how we just fixed this. We fixed it the way we fixed it before. I'm going to comment this out. Well, we're done with this. So I'm going to control L. And I'm just going to say, you know what? Clamp the, the dot product. If it goes negative, then just drop it out. Drop it to zero. But if it's positive, meaning if it's between zero and one, then I want that. I want the regular specular reflections that we're used to. But if we get negative ones, I don't want that red showing up where the red shouldn't be showing up. So let's control F5 that run. Oh, see our red's all gone. And then obviously we're raising to a large power here. So we have a big red specular highlight. So ah, anyway, the things you learn, I've taught graphics how long here and I still don't, don't master it all. But I think we have this up to 50. We control F5 that. And you see we have a much tighter circle now. So I really need to drop a slider on this circle, make this so we can adjust this value here, this exponent with a, a circle. And finally, it makes me start thinking about specular maps and things like that. Anyway.